Hello, my name is David Rocker. And for the next several minutes, I'm going to walk you through the timeline of what we as believers know as Holy Week or Passion Week. The reason why it's called Passion Week, because in the Christian realm, the word passion means to suffer or endure. That's where the title of the famous movie made by Mel Gibson, The Passion of the Christ, comes from. It simply talks about or depicts the suffering that Jesus would endure during his last week physically here on earth. It starts out with what we know today as Palm Sunday. This would be the day that Jesus would make his triumphant entry into the city of Jerusalem. He would ride in on the back of a donkey and a colt. A lot of people would wonder, well, why would Jesus, being such a king <laughs> and Lord, ride in on a donkey? Well, the reason he did this was to fulfill the prophecy that was spoken by Zechariah 500 years before that said the king would come riding in lowly on the back of a donkey. Secondly, it was also to send the message to the government of Rome that, yes, he was coming in on a donkey, letting them know that he was a king. Let me explain it a little bit more. See, when, when, when the Roman kings would go off to war, they would ride off on their nice, beautiful stallion. But after they would achieve victory, they would ride back into the city on the back of a donkey. Jesus was sending them a message, letting them know that, yes, he was a king, but not just a mere man king, but he was the king of kings and the Lord of lords. People were so excited that Jesus was making this triumphant entry into the city because finally they said the Messiah is making his move. He's about to come and take over Rome. The people were excited because they were saying, listen, Jesus is going to set us free as a nation and also politically. Little did they know, Jesus, as he approached the city of Jerusalem, would weep. As the people were crying out, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest Jesus was focused on a higher mission, on saying, listen, I'm not coming to set you free just as a nation or set you free politically, but I'm here to die for you and set you free spiritually. The people would take off their clothes and their clothing and lay them in his path, celebrating their king coming in. As I mentioned earlier, they would cry out, Hosanna, taking off palm branches off of trees and laying them in his path. This was simply a, a sign of adoration because they were so excited that the king was coming. Jesus, as I said, wept and cried because he knew that that would be his last week on earth. Jesus would ride out of the city, returning to Bethany, knowing that the following Sunday was coming. It is now Monday morning. Jesus leaves Bethany, and he's on his way to return back to the city of Jerusalem. It's early in the morning, and he's hungry. So on the road to Jerusalem, he passes a fig tree. And when he begins to look for figs on that tree, he noticed that there's any figs. They only have leaves. Jesus cursed that tree and said, from this point on, you should not bear any fruit. And immediately, that fig tree began to wither. Jesus would go on and make his way once again into the city of Jerusalem, and his first stop would be the temple. He would cleanse the temple for the second time, as he did early on in his ministry, turning over tables and running out all the money changers and those who profited off of those who had come to worship. Jesus stated these words. He said, my father's house should be a house of prayer and you have turned it into a den of thieves. Once he cleansed the temple, Jesus would begin to teach there at the temple daily. Today is Tuesday. Jesus wakes up in the morning once again, and he's making his way back to Jerusalem. He's with his disciples, and he passes the fig tree 
that he cursed the day before. He takes this moment and teaches his disciples about faith. He tells them to trust in God. And when it comes to prayer, he tells them, whatever you ask in my name, believing it without doubting that you would receive it. Jesus would later go on into Jerusalem and begin to teach at the temple. While he's doing that, Judas decides to meet with the Sanhedrin and plan to betray Jesus. Jesus, once again, after finishing teaching at the temple, will return to Bethany, all the while knowing that Sunday is coming. It is now Wednesday. Jesus does not go to the city of Jerusalem, but instead he spends the entire day in Bethany. He is planning for the Last Supper. However, Judas of Iscariot, he's in the city of Jerusalem with a Sanhedrin planning on how they are going to arrest Jesus. Even though they're making these plans to arrest Jesus, little do they know, Sunday is coming. Today is now Thursday. Peter and John are now making plans for the Passover meal. Later on that evening, Jesus sits down and eats with his 12 disciples. After he finished eating with them, he now began to wash their feet and teach them about servanthood. He even gives Judas the opportunity to repent. Yet, Judas declines and decides to leave. This is where now, as we know today, the Lord's Supper has been instituted. After that, Jesus and his disciples, they leave and go to the place called the Garden of Gethsemane. At this place, Jesus would begin to agonize in prayer. This is when he would go ahead and plead with his father and say these words. Father, not my will, but your will be done. Later on, Jesus is betrayed by Judas and he is now arrested by the Sanhedrin. He now is taken from courtroom to courtroom to see the high priest. The Sanhedrin convenes and Jesus knows what's going to happen to him. And even Peter now, as much as he said he wouldn't do it, he denies Jesus three times before the rooster crows. Jesus spends that night in a dark pit, all the while knowing Sunday. Is coming. Today is now Friday, in which we refer to now as Good Friday. But as for Jesus, this would be one of the most humiliating days that he would experience here on earth. He would be marched to six different courtrooms. He would be beaten on and spat upon. Some say he was even beaten beyond recognition. Even his disciple, Peter, who had followed him from afar, would deny him three times before the rooster would crow. The people are now having to make a decision on do they want Jesus or do they want Barabbas? The people would begin to cry out, give us Barabbas. Barabbas is now set free. And the people that were crying out just several days ago, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, are now looking at Jesus and saying, crucify him. Crucify him. Jesus is turned over to be crucified. The Roman soldiers take a crown of thorns and place it on Jesus' head. While this is going on, Judas go and hangs himself because he realized what he has done. He has betrayed Jesus Christ. Jesus now has to carry his cross to a place called Golgotha, a place of the skull. The Roman soldiers would drive nails in his hand and his feet, and Jesus would begin to hang there from 9 o'clock in the morning until 3 p.m. Around 12 noon, while he is hanging on the cross, 
It is said that a gross darkness begins to come over the earth. Jesus cries out and says, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Even while Jesus is hanging on the cross between two thieves, a thief asks him, says, Jesus, forgive me. And Jesus says, today you will be with me in paradise. I want you to understand that while Jesus is hanging on the cross from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., several things are going on. As I told you in the beginning, this is when everything changes. At 3 p.m., the temple veil is torn from top to bottom. Graves are now being opened. People are rising from the dead and they're walking through the city. Jesus, the Passover lamb, the lamb of God, is hanging on the cross, having his side pierced, and as blood begins to flow, this is the redemptive blood the last atonement for all of our sins. It is now Saturday. Jesus has been placed in the tomb and the Jewish leaders are so concerned about Jesus that they request that guards be set before his tomb. They even want to seal around the door of his tomb. And Pilate grants the request. But little do they know, even though they're setting guards and putting a seal around the tomb of Jesus, little do they know that Sunday is coming. Today is now Sunday, and boy, do I have some good news for you. Today is the day known as Resurrection Day. Jesus rose from the grave. I'm here to tell you that Jesus is alive. What's so beautiful about this day is on Resurrection Day or Resurrection Sunday, Jesus not only rose from the grave, but he made appearances. He made his appearance to Mary Magdalene. He also showed up and showed himself to two disciples as they were walking down the road. Even Simon Peter was able to see him and his other disciples. It says over 40 days, Jesus would make 12 different appearances. So listen, my friends. All of us should realize that this week, known as Holy Week, leads up to this great day right here, known as Resurrection Day. The day that Jesus conquered death, hell, and the grave to set us all free from our sins. Praise God, our Savior is alive. God bless you all, and remember, Jesus is alive and God loves you. Blessings to you.